The Creatures of Night by Hubertus the Bald Translated from Latin by his brother in prayer, Fratre Johann Marcus Of Monstrosity You who read me know that night engenders monsters and that night creatures exist. The accursed book of Abdul al-Hazred is clear on this matter. That is not dead which can eternal lie. Unhappy he who knows that book. Unhappy he whose eyes alight upon that foulest of texts. Unhappy he who implores the standing stones. For he will free the powers of darkness. Of the pit. Stagnant waters are like the memory of men. Beneath the surface calm, clawed beasts await and are known to initiates as the deep ones. Awaiting his prey, the deep one seizes him and drags him down to the abyss, where Dagon, the cruel god, swims and reveres him whose name may not be pronounced of libraries. Unhappy he who frees the prowler. Unhappy he who meets the prowler erring among the books. He generates the vagabond that comes from other spheres. He believes the vagabond does not exist. He will feel the embrace of death, for in the eyes of the vagabond books are no more than dreams stone no more than wind the vagabond knows how to take the breath of the reckless of strife he who speaks does not know and believes he is able to kill the creatures of the night folly Evil is conjured up by science and secrecy. He who prowls among books will perish by the blade. He who flies in the dark caverns will scream in fear. He who swims in the depths will evaporate. But he who believes he knows, knows nothing. He who knows, says nothing. Of death. There are domains more terrible than death. That is not dead which can eternal lie. Each creature is conjured up and is not dead, but returns to the origins. A monster, a science. Steel kills the vagabond who never dies. Translator's Note Here ends the manuscript of Hubertus who died in the library of the convent of Teruela in the year of our Lord, 1666. Requiescat in pace.
The Tale of Captain J.W. Norton of the Army of the Union 1862 The South was in collapse. Louisiana was open to us. I had each day to requisition victuals for our troops, and was aided in this endeavor by a score of brave men. Rebels were not yet ready to lay down their arms. The region was far from safe. I headed further and further west, and questioned many freed slaves. From them, I learned of a plantation on the coast. Its name was Dersetto. We received a less than hearty welcome. Only Pickford, the owner, behaved in a friendly manner. While my men counted cattle and grain reserves, I learned what I could from him. The man was most unusual and possessed an extraordinarily cultured mind. At nightfall, I gave orders for the men to bivouac at Dersetto. Pickford invited my second-in-command, Lieutenant Patterson, and myself to dine. And our host proved a most entertaining conversationalist. While coffee was being served, Patterson went to inspect the men's camp. The cigar Pickford offered me was so acrid that my head began to spin. I remembered campfire tales of fellow officers trapped by devilish Confederate tricks. My mind floated in a foul and dense fog, from which emerged the enlarged and deformed face of Pickford. He grinned at me. Patterson's return chased off the nightmare. I heard shouts and firing from outside and found the strength to take out my revolver. I fired three shots. Pickford fell to the floor. Patterson then helped me out of the burning house. The air was filled with smoke. We resembled a company in disorderly retreat. I saw slaves leaping into the flames of that inferno. They were trying to save Pickford's life. Thank <laughs> you. 
Juan Luis Jorge, De Biblioteca, Reflections on the Power of the Verb in Certain Texts, Archaeos Publications, 1919, Stafford. Translation does not alter the occult power contained within such forbidden texts. The malevolent energy is in no way diminished. The spell must be cast aloud and clearly. In certain languages or little known dialects, Maglafach Fathang. The reader will understand that, in the light of these revelations, I would be foolhardy to continue quoting from the text I have before me. If spoken aloud in its entirety, it would surely awaken powerful and malignant forces. I will go further and say that simple reading of some of the more technical passages describing specific practices is in itself a perilous exercise. The ill-prepared reader can easily fall prey to attacks of demented hysteria, not unlike those described in cases of individuals said to be possessed by evil spirits. I recommend the study made by Zempf, Urbain, Grandier, and Loudon, and the reports made by the Reverend Richard Price concerning a number of astonishing, to say the least, exorcisms carried out in a parish near Providence. Given what I have written, we must be grateful to the librarians of the British Museum who have never allowed consultation of the work of Al-Azib's startling work, the infamous Necronomicon. Copies of that work do exist, in spite of the zeal of book-burning inquisitors. For proof, we need look no further than the British Museum, of course, and the sealed archives of the Miskatonic University in Arkham. Other examples of books whose evil can be unleashed by any thoughtless reader are von Jutz's von unersprechlichen Kulten and the abominable De Vermis Mysteries by Ludwig Prien, whose sordid death should be a lesson to all those tempted by a study of the occult. The Sacrificial Dagger, Otto Stern, Lumina Books. The importance placed on ritual sacrifice is constant in religious cult practice. Propitiating the gods is a theme common to many religions. The Old Testament affords many examples. 
Primitive polytheistic belief systems integrate sacrifice in their rituals as part of the recurrent process of reaffirmation and, naturally enough, group cohesion. The members of their social and religious community come together in an act of purification and atonement. It would be erroneous to imagine the act of human sacrifice, linking priest, offering and God, C.F. Manzetti, Stone Colts, as anything less than a vital focusing of the group's faith. The act also ensures the continuing appeasement of the God, but only if practiced by a recognized officiating priest using the appropriate instrument. Studies made concerning primitive religious groups bear witness to the central role of sacrifice in living ritual. My own work in the field of ethnopsychology brought me into contact with a sorcerer living in the region of Arkham. He introduced me to the rite of steel, linked to a ceremony known as adoring the black goat of the woods with a thousand youngs. The god, being adored, is known as the Vagabond. Here, the dagger's roar, which allows the life breath to pass from one dimension to another, is essential. The Vagabond is a frightening figure, being able to move where he wants and to kill those who have displeased the goat god, for whom he acts as a go-between. The goat is clearly a fertility god. The priest, having spoken the invocation, must choose the appropriate dagger for the sacrifice. The knife with a sinusoidal blade that must be dipped seven times on night when the moon is full, in water that has been distilled a hundred times, will be laid aside, since it would send the vagabond back into his own dimension. See illustration. The priest will rather choose the dagger with a curved blade. That is more appropriate for slitting of the lamb's throat. This act transfigures the sorcerer priest and plunges the assembled worshippers into a divine trance. The Book of Yael, Signs of Stone, Eucharistic Rituals of Forbidden Cults. Texts collated by Monsignor Vache, legate in the Curia of the Vatican. Numerous devilish cults speak of monstrous creatures called the Old Ones. These supernatural beings are believed to be possessed of powers equivalent to those of the gods of antique religions. Adepts of such cults refer to forbidden literature in order to cause these frightful entities to appear before them. What serious student of folk myths has not come across the names of Cthulhu and Shub Nigurath? It must be said that these creatures wield tremendous power and are difficult to control once they have been unleashed into the world. Those who serve he who goes in shadows protect themselves with signs of stone carved into the walls of houses or engraved on various objects. For those misguided servants of evil, the best protection appears to be that afforded by the sign of the most ancient gods, engraved in Menar stone, a heavy material said to be disagreeable to the touch. The sinful practices of those who fall into such errors can only lead to the darkest of despair and are a mortal danger 
to the soul. Such monsters as those invoked by these foolhardy individuals are engendered when reason drops its guard. Man is easily tempted into perversion. It is why we must forever remain alert and renounce Satan with each breath we take. His ways are infinite in number.
Memoirs of a Lost Soul The mask must fall. You who discover this manuscript understand this. I am here at your side. I am waiting in the darkness of my crypt. Soon you will belong to me. One of my slaves wrote this document. I have lived for three centuries, and my name is Ezekiel Prakst or Eliah Pickford. You may choose which to call me. I do not hide out of fear. My power is immense. I have sailed the seven seas. My ship, the Astarte, spread terror through all the continents. The Corsairs judged me like the Welsh judges of 1620, but they could not destroy me, and neither could the pirates. Now! I am immobilized. Damned Yankees! Witchcraft, voodoo, and the Cthulhu cult. I know them all. I have reigned and implored the stones. Only the Catonian haunts the cavern and resists me, but he dare not attack. I have need of a living body to regenerate myself. The Heartwoods managed to escape from me, but you who are reading these words, you will yield to my embrace. I hear your ragged breath. <laughs> and smell the stench of your fear. I have vanquished death. I built Deceto. I know what it is to wait. Cthulhu helps me. My servants will lay you upon the sacrificial stone. My roar will rend the night. You will be mine, and I shall reign once more. <laughs> <laughs> Come to me.
Ha 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 